All right, so we're back. Uh, it's been probably about a month since I uh, last addressed you guys. I did take a trip to the Northwest where I actually visited my parents, and I also went on board the USS Turner Joy, uh, LCI 713, and PT 658, as well as uh, USS Blueback, which is in Portland, Oregon. Uh, got pictures of the radio room. It was a good time. Uh, met a lot of good people while I was up there. And uh, it was a nice visit uh, with my parents. So uh, in this video, what we're going to do is I'm going to build the cable that goes between the RF-110 and the RF-124. Uh, I did get a second set of connectors because I'm going to build two cables. Uh, I bought the second set of connectors from the William Perry Company. Uh, it is, uh, he's a great place to get Amphenol Cannon style connectors for a very reasonable price. Uh, the reason I have a second set is because I also have the power supply and the amplifier part of a pacer bounce. Uh, all I'm going to have to get now is the uh, RF-350 uh, or compatible uh, transceiver to go on the top of it. But that'll be a down the road because after the URT-23, I've got this URC-35, uh, which is a transceiver, 100 watts. Probably the heaviest 100 watts on the planet, but uh, follow along with the uh, time lapse video of me making the cable to go between the RF 110 and the RF 134. Here we go. All right, so we went over this before too. Uh, I've got uh, about a five foot section of multicolored strand, um, 18 gauge wires that I'll use for uh, most of the control wires, and then I've got. Uh, some 18 gauge silicone that is good for uh, 20 kilovolts DC. So that'll be good for the 2200 volt line. Uh, I'll probably use it for the 500 volt line too. Got the complete set of uh, uh, connectors. You can see, got one there for the, I believe that one goes on the power supply side and that one right there goes on the amplifier side. And then uh, the two from William Perry Company, uh, same thing, uh, different style of, uh, of casing on it though. We'll use those for the other cable. And then to protect all of it, I bought some of this one inch sheath. You know, it's expandable, compresses, so it'll uh, fit over this and or fit inside here and then I can push it back in so it's nice and taut. The whole cable, if you remember correctly, doesn't have to be very long. I think you've got maybe a foot of cable in between the connectors, maybe just a tad more. So this is what we're going to make right here. This is the one that came off the ship. But as I showed you in the last video, for some reason, the uh, this guy is clocked differently than the rest. And I'm going to go investigate that next time I'm on the ship because it is kind of interesting that it would be clocked like that. So. So what we'll do is we'll heat up the uh, soldering iron here, get some water in the sponge so we can get a nice clean solder, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so you saw me make the one hole end. Uh, I'm not going to make this time lapse go all the way to the other end because it, you're just going to see the same thing over again. So uh, I'm going to finish this up real quick and then I'll be right back with you and uh, we'll see what the finished product looks like. All right, so we're finished. And here is the finished cable. You can see it. Uh, this nice shielding on it to protect the wires, good connectors. I tested it uh, for uh, continuity. Um, I might uh, run uh, number R and M, which are the 2200 and 500 uh, volt feeds uh, through my uh, uh, 
voltage tester just to make sure that I'm not getting any uh, shorts across it. So let me uh, do that and then we will uh, put this thing on and maybe see if we have a little bit of life. All right, so I went ahead and installed it. You can see here, fits in, it's about the right size. All the other cables are here. So I've got my facility ground strap, I've got all my, uh, my coax, I've got my connector that goes to the uh, antenna tuner, the power cable's all hooked up, I have the two other uh, Amphenol connectors I need to uh, wire it into my switchboard. A nice thing about the RF-110 is you can bring everything into the switchboard if you need to, or everything from the switchboard into the RF-110 and it'll feed out to the to the um, exciter etc uh, so here we go and one of the things I am going to do is I don't know exactly how long this system has been offline the dermo sticker that's on there says 99 so there's a chance it's been offline for almost uh, what is that 25 years now um, so if that's the case I don't want any arcing inside the uh, power tubes or the finals and the drivers so I will probably set it up to standby which keeps the tubes warm let them burn off uh, any gases that have built up inside there um, there's plenty of information online if you want to know what I'm talking about there um, but uh, I would hate to damage these tubes because these finals are not cheap and uh, I don't want to have to replace them I do have a spare set in my spare unit but uh, that would be a huge waste uh, to uh, have to do that. All right, now before we power it up, we do have to check the uh, voltage settings because I'm running it off of uh, 240 volts using the RF-124. There is a transformer setting that you need to, uh, you do uh, inside the actual RF-110 to compensate for the internal voltage. You can find that on uh, in the manual. I'll put a little snapshot of that in there and then I will show you what we need to adjust. So here's the different voltages that are required. Uh, you know, you do 440, 230, 208, and 115. Uh, the 115 is for 400 hertz, so you cannot use it on your normal plug. And then what you need to adjust is this terminal strip right here. So it looks like this one is currently set up for 208. So we're going to go ahead and bump that up to 230 volts because I am getting 238 volts out of my wall jack here at the house. All right, so we're all plugged in. Um, settings are all set up. Got the amplifier set to off. Um, Basically, off, turn all this down, make sure that the power is down, and then uh, we will uh, turn it on. Let's see. Ready? Here goes the primary power. All right. Looks like we've got fan action here. Power light is on. And then uh, there's no uh, power yet to the um, amplifier, so I haven't switched it on. So we're in standby and we're on. There's the uh, there's that extremely nice sounding 11,000 RPM, 400 hertz fan. We're in standby. I have it set to rat. You feel the back here. I don't see any errors. No overloads. Okay. 
not getting any uh, not getting any uh, things on here but I imagine this because I'm not in the operate I'm waiting to see if I get any heat we do have high we do have power on high voltage is not on which is fine you know we're not transmitting I don't have any the dummy load hooked up let me go see what the voltage is, or the temperature is. So our inbound air is about 70 degrees. Outbound air is roughly the same. So it looks like our antenna tuner is getting power, so that's good. I'm just going to let it run for a minute, and uh, we will see if we get any, uh, any heat out the back. But so far, so good. No smoke out of the box.